Welcome to St. Jacob Lutheran Church. This is the fifth Sunday in Lent. We are grateful that uh, you have joined us for worship this day. Number one, please let us know uh, through the church office if you are in need of anything. How can we help? Um, we are here to help. That's what the church does. Our worship services will continue to be taped each week so that you may view them Sunday morning. Um, please go to the church website for any updates or, or bulletins which you will find on the website as well as um, the sermons will also be posted there. You may continue your giving by sending your envelope or check by mail to the church. Uh, you may also use the church online giving through Vanco. You can find this on the church website under the Donate Online tab. If you have any questions, please let us know. And during these challenging times, we are extremely grateful for all offerings to the Lord given through this place. All correspondence can be done by postal mail, email, or dropping off your items at the church office weekday mornings. Thank you. We continue with the order of confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first lesson this morning is from the first chapter of Ezekiel, beginning with the first verse. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, Suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds of breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. One hundred one, oh, I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Uh, we will read by whole verse responsibly, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord. My soul waits, and your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second lesson is from the 8th chapter of Romans, beginning with the 6th verse. <clears throat> to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life is because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O God. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death. But they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was told, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found Lazarus. Lazarus had already been dead. Been, I'm sorry, been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, 
He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to, him, to them, Unbind him, let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The psalmist cries out, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Crying out is what we people of God most often do in times of personal family and even national tragedy. In the time of Ezekiel, the chosen people of God had been defeated, removed from their homeland, and forced to live in exile in a foreign land. They had about as much chance as returning home as they did putting flesh on a skeleton and calling it to life. Their pleas for help are numerous and covered decades. A hundred years later, or hundreds of years later, Lazarus, the brother of Martha and Mary and a close friend of Jesus, died after an illness. Jesus had been summoned to help, but tarried a bit, and Lazarus died was placed in a tomb and had been there for days by the time Jesus finally showed up. He arrived to find a multitude of mourners and two sisters overcome by grief. Each of them cried out, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now we find ourselves in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. As of the time of the writing of this sermon, we have roughly 550,000 documented cases with 25,000 deaths worldwide. In our own country, we have 82,000 cases and 1,200 deaths. I saw on the news last night that we now have a documented case of COVID-19 in Shelby County, Ohio. This is a time of personal, family, and even national tragedy. It will touch us all. To some degree, it already has touched us all. People are getting extremely sick, and some of them are dying. Seniors and people with underlying health conditions are especially at risk if they contract the virus. All of us face 
no matter the age, category, or level of good health, are at risk. Contracting the virus or dying from the virus is not the only element of tragedy we face. Many of us are living under a stay-at-home order. Even for the most introverted and hermit-like among us, this is unsettling at the least. For those of us who need social, face-to-face -face interaction, this is devastating. I worry greatly about those who, before this, struggled with loneliness, depression, and isolation. Then there is the economic fallout. Thousands and thousands of people have already been furloughed or laid off or let go. Some families have lost the entirety of their income stream. I worry about them too, very much. And who knows when this thing will end? Out of the depths I cry to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask for. I'm asking, God save us. We pray, we cry out, we plead, and we also ask questions. God, did you cause this to happen or let it happen? God, are you hearing us? God, why haven't you acted already? God, are you in control? And that's the tip of the iceberg, which means that I clearly do not have time here to answer every question we might have for the Almighty. Long ago, yes, long ago, I graduated from Lutheran Theological Southern Seminary, where I had Dr. Tony Everett for pastoral care classes. The classes where the theological rubber hits the road. We received binders for his class, big yellow binders with the seminary logo in his pastoral care mantra in big blue letters. Wiggy at W I G I A T. Where is God in all this? In the midst of personal, family, or national tragedy, this is my focus. A lot of questions can keep till later, but this one can't, won't. Where is God in all this? The people of God are in decades old exile. Despair runs deep. The chance of return is extremely remote. Where is God in all this? Well, God raises up a new superpower on the block. The oppressors of God's people are overthrown. Will this be the time? Yes, God is in control. A spirit-filled wind blows. There is a breath of life. A valley of dry bones take on new flesh. Rise and live. The people return home. Lazarus is dead. Martha and Mary are bound by their grief. Jesus weeps. 
Jesus also went to the tomb, took control, prayed to his Father and ours, gave orders, and raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, come out! And when Lazarus emerged from the tomb full of life, Jesus commanded those present, unbind him, let him go. Where is God in all of this? In the midst of this tragedy, it is not always as obvious as it is with these miraculous texts. But God is present and God is at work. In a valley of dry bones, God is at work. At the tomb of a beloved brother and friend, God is at work. All around in the world, in those places of disease and despair, God is at work. God is always at work in those places where there is pain and suffering and even death. Bringing God's healing love to bear. Bringing hope, bringing life where life was not. I, I admit freely that I want the Lazarus scale miracle, the dry bone scale miracle. I want God to work it. I want to see it. And I want God forgive me. I want it now. God clearly has a track record of super big miracles. It can happen. But I refuse to sit on my bottom, do nothing, and just wait for God to take care of everything. I believe that when Jesus shows up at the cemetery, takes control and defeats death, he is also commissioning us to go to the places of pain and suffering and in our own way, using our own gifts, as God calls us, join in the task of working miracles. They may be tiny miracles compared to dry bones given life and the dead being raised, but all our miracles together, as the people of God would go a miraculously long way to the healing and restoring of the world, sending a card, making a phone call, reaching out in some way, asking those who are most vulnerable, how can I help? What do you need? None of us individually is going to save the world. But we might just save the day for one person. And for that one person, that one day when you performed many miracles, might be the day that turned it all around. Wigiat. Where is God in all this? Jesus proclaims to us who live in the midst of worldwide pandemic, you are unbound. You are set free. Believe in me and trust me. Even when belief and trust seem impossible. Come with me and live in hope. Come with me and help me unbind others and set them free. Do not doubt, but believe, for I am the resurrection and the life. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We receive our offerings, however they have been sent, electronically or mailed into the church. We give them to God's healing work in this world, and we thank you for your generosity. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. God of resurrection and life, bind your faithful people together into one body. Enliven us all with your spirit. Accomplish your saving work in and through us as we seek to serve as agents of your restoring love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for bishops, pastors, deacons, congregational leaders, and all the baptized people of God in these uncertain times. Grant wisdom, strength, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for frontline health care workers who put themselves at great risk in order to care for those who suffer. Protect them in their work. Give them strength to carry on. Provide the equipment that they need through the generosity of others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who work long hours to pack, ship, and deliver essential items where they are needed. Keep them safe in their labor and on the road. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those in positions of authority who are called to make difficult decisions for the well-being of all. Grant them wisdom, courage, and compassion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up before you Sue, Jill, Cheryl, Joy, Bill, Hayes, Judith, Tom, Janet, Don, Mary, Tom, Carson, Sarah, David, Hayden, Bill, Doris, Gary, Luke, Mary Jane, Val, Dave, Jim, Kathy, Tom, Mike, Adam, Deb, Henry, Jean, Rhonda, Stephanie, Steve, as well as those others we name on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.